Well, painting on black can be very tricky. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, this painting took me way out of my comfort zone. But that's okay because we need to learn and I'm going to share what I learned with you. So, my name is Jovette if you haven't seen me before. Okay, let's just go ahead and get started. I'm starting out with some clear linseed oil, a water mixable linseed oil. If you don't have water mixable linseed oil and you're using regular paints, then just go ahead and use whatever kind of clear oil medium that you need to. Uh, I've just put a little bit on a paper towel and uh, because my canvas is gessoed three times, it's very smooth and so I can go ahead and I can just add this oil right on the canvas here. Now I realize that you may not be able to see this because it's uh, black and there might be some glare but it will go away eventually. <laughs> okay I'm starting out with a three quarter inch natural bristle floral brush and uh, I love these brushes. These are great for backgrounds. But I want to start out with some yellow. Now these are all transparent colors and I am using all water mixable oil but if you don't have that use whatever brand of, of uh, paint that you have or whatever brand that you like. So I'm just starting out adding some yellow here. Like I said and I know it's hard to see. And I want a very low horizon. This is going to be mostly sky up here and then, then down here is not sky. <laughs> okay, next uh, I want to go into a little bit of alizarin crimson. Go right above that yellow. And go about oh, maybe a little above halfway. Blending down into that yellow a little bit and up and next let's go into some blue and this will be on the top and I am blending down into the alizarin because I want that to be kind of a lavenderish color. And I might even just add a little of both of these together just to make sure that I have that lavender in there. Okay, down here, let's add a little bit of green, the sap green. All my colors are listed below in, the, in, the, in this um, description section, the more section of the of the video. So there's some green and let's add uh, maybe a little blue down here, a little more green, and let's even add a touch of brown because green can be pretty intense and I don't, I want this a little bit muted, I don't want a bright green. Okay, next just kind of wipe that brush, give it a good squeeze, get that most of that paint out. We're going into white now. And um, loading both sides of the brush. And let's go right into this yellow here. I want the yellow first. And as we come up, I'm going into the alizarin. Try and keep your lines horizontal. Keep going up, but notice that I'm not adding any more white because I want this to get darker and darker and darker as we go up into the sky. This is a very nighttime scene. I just squeeze my brush out. I just want to wipe that excess paint out. And let's also add just a little bit. I want this uh, actually a brighter yellow right in here. So I'll go over that and now start coming down.
and I'm pressing fairly hard here. And this is not green enough. I want this more green and brown. Just going to add some here. This is in the water. Now what I want to do is take my bunny brush. I get so many comments on my bunny brush, but this is my little bunny brush. Um, you know, it just says made in China. It has, it's just a little cheap thing that I got. I don't know. I don't even remember where I got it from, but uh, it just works really great. Anyway, um, we're just going to go across. What this is going to do is just smooth out that paint. And just keep going across. See how nicely that works? And just keep going across, across, all the way up into the top of the sky. Once up at the top, you can start coming back down again if it's still a little bit rough, which mine is. Okay, and then down, down, and down. Now I want this to be a little bit more reddish orangish in here. <clears throat> so I'm going to just take some red. I don't want too much paint, but I just want to change this shade in here. I want this warmer. Okay, that's good. Very inexpensive. These are synthetics. I want to do some mountains in the distant background. And my horizon is probably going to be right about in here somewhere. Just guesstimating. And I'm going to use a little brown and blue, which will make a very dark, dark brown color. Maybe even a touch of alizarin. That makes it almost a black color, which is pretty cool. <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and just put in something right about in here. I want to have not, this is way distant, so I, I don't want it too descriptive, but I, I definitely want it to show up. Just come across, let's grab a little more of that dark color. Let's bring some in over here also. And as it picks up this yellow, you can see that it kind of lightens and highlights some, which is very nice. I like that. It gives a lot of mm, distinctiveness to these um, hills. And I also want to shadow it somewhat. So we'll bring this down. Bring this down. didn't get quite enough here, so I'm redoing this a little bit. Okay, I think that will do nicely. And now I just want to give it a, a little blend here. Bring it across. Kind of hypnotize the water some the number 10. But use whatever whatever knife you're comfortable with. Um, I'm going to go into some white. 
And maybe some of this orange. We don't want pure white, so let's just go into maybe a little bit of this orangey color. And let's just go in here. And just make a little bit of waterline. And with the bunny brush, I'm going to just lightly go over this. Yeah, that is looking cool. Okay, now I want to also, we'll just use this same color here. I'm going to do just a little bit on these hills. How about a little bit on this side? Okay, I think that looks good. I'm just going to leave this like it is. This is my background. I'm going to go in, let's take some of this brown color again, some blue, crimson. Okay, here's center. I want to go off to the right side of center. So I'm going to come up to Let's go right about here. Grab some more paint. I just want a nice dark brown color here. Now I'm going to be doing this in two parts and the reason is because I want this to dry before I um, before I do anything else with it. I want this whole thing to dry because when I do my wildlife, my bird, I want to have a dry surface to paint on so that if I boo-boo, it's easy to fix. See, there's always a method to my madness. <laughs> Oh, these are just three posts sticking up in front of the water here. Just to actually cut off logs, I guess they would be. And now I want to go, let's take some of this and with a little yellow. And uh, that's a little bit too light for this is where I want to go right now. So let's just darken it some. Yeah, that's good. Okay, let's go in and just on this left side here. A little more. Again on this left side. And right here. A little more yellow. And let's just go ahead, we we'll have to brace my hand here for this. I'm just highlighting these left sides just a little bit more than what they are. And this would be highlight a little bit in the back but then it would also swing around like so. And 
this all here would be also highlighted a bit in the back. Wait, I got too much paint here. Let's go back into the yellow. Some of this blue or purplish color. Cross the back, swing around. Yes. And the same with this last one here. Now I'm just adding a touch of white to this. Wipe it off when your brush gets dirty. And if you want to turn your painting upside down to do this, if it's easier, go ahead and do that. Make these little grooves in here. And just kind of make these log looking. Now on this back side, I want to do just a hair of blue. Because this would be reflective light. That's cool. I like it. And if you get too much of this, too much highlighting on one side or the other, what you can do is just go through and darken the center again with um, just your plain dark color. See, like this is too much. Let's just darken it. through here. I have here a very, very tiny, um, a little flat brush. This is a synthetic. It uh, doesn't have a number on it. Maybe it does. Oh, a number two. Royal Lang Nickel, Royal and Lang Nickel. So, um, this, so I want to add some rope to these posts here, pilings, I guess they call them. And uh, I'll tell you, I'm learning so much from this lesson. <laughs> okay, so what we want to do, let's go into, uh, to get a rope color, let's just go into some dark brown, add a little blue, a little crimson, just making a dark brown color. Okay, so what I want to do, I'm going to make this just slightly, slightly rounded. And let's just go right across here. And across to here. Come to the other side. Whoops, let's not get too fancy here. <laughs> And this rope would actually be out just a hair outside the logs. Just 
just a little bit because of the thickness of the rope. I'm just going to put one rope on here. I could put two or three, but I think one is sufficient. Okay, uh, paper towel. Just go ahead and squeeze that excess paint off. And let's go into some yellow. Um, some white. And uh, let's see, what color? Maybe brown. Just to make it um, a little darker than, than what the color is now. Just a little bit darker. Yeah, that should be good, I think. We'll try it and see. We may have to lighten it even some more. I don't know. But when you're doing these little rope things, what you do, you start at the top, and what we're going to do is kind of make a like a little S shape. So start at the top of the rope and come down. You'll want to load your brush frequently because you'll be picking up other paint. Leave just a tiny little space in between each little stroke. This is a pretty good size rope. Now as we get towards the back here, I'm not going to reload the brush because I want it to get darker. And that turned out good. I think we'll just darken this, this one here just a little bit. And this one here, just towards the bottom. Oh, perfect. Now, isn't that nice? I like that. Okay. All right, now what I'm going to do, let this dry 100%. I want the whole painting to dry because what I'm going to do next is add my wildlife, my bird. And um, if I make a mistake, I want to be able to fix it real easy. So <laughs> I'm going to let this dry for a week, at least a week, and uh, I'll pick it up from there. Now this is a bit of a long, tedious process, but we're going to go through it step by step. So what I'm going to do, this is my number six flat brush. It's a synthetic. And um, as you can see, well, like the size of my fingernail, you can see about the size it is. And I want to go into a little black, a little blue, and some white. And I'm just looking for a gray color. And I want it towards the blue, <clears throat> towards the bluish side. Now, what we're going to be doing first is just blocking this in, and um, and then I'm going to let this dry. But I'll take you through it step by step. So, load that brush really well. Now, I want this bird to be a little bit wider than this uh, piling, so I'm going to go a little bit above. And I'm going to put my brush in. You can see the top of the piling here. I'm going to go a little bit above that. And right about in the middle here. I'm going to put my brush down and make a circle. The reason I want this to dry in between is because if I try and add other colors to this gray while it's wet, it's not going to work out very well. And so now let's just kind of shape our bird a little bit. And you'll have to get a picture or something maybe to go by. But I'm just doing this freehand. You probably have his little chest sticking out here. Okay, that's maybe about right in, in size and proportion. 
Okay, then with my smaller, a smaller brush, now this is a number two synthetic flat brush. You can see according to my fingernail, it's quite small. Go ahead and load this brush. Now this is going to be for his head, so we've got the two sizes. And I want to have room for a neck here, definitely a neck coming in probably right about here. And then we'll just go ahead and make another circle. And like I say, you're going to have to play with this, just kind of get it to something that you like. And do get a reference photo if you have one. I don't have one in front of me. This is just going by memory. See the nice thing about doing it this way? So I think this is too steep here. <clears throat> so I can just go into a little water because this undercoating, this other has dried for a week. I can just go in here, blot out, and I can just take out that excess that I don't want in there because that got, to me, that's too large. Okay, let's continue on. And his beak would probably be out right about here. And that looks like it might be pretty good proportion. I'm guessing. And just for reference sake, I'm going to put uh, a little leg down here. And I want that right about in the middle of his body. One long leg. It'll have a little knob here and a foot. And let's do one more. The feet I'm not too concerned with. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on the feet. I am not a foot painter. <laughs> anyway, oh, he's looking pretty cute already, isn't he? Actually, I, I, I see something else here I want to change also. Um, just rinsing off my brush. Go into, just blot it off a little bit. To me, this looks more like a duck. <laughs> I think I decided it looks more like a duck. So I'm going to take off some of this outer edge here. There, yeah, that's beginning to look more like a seagull now. Okay, so now all I want to do is let this totally dry, and it'll take probably about six days. Once it's totally dry, then I can start adding white and beautiful colors, so it's going to be really nice. Just go ahead and just shape your bird any way that you like. And you know what? If you don't want to paint a seagull, you could paint anything. It does not have to be a seagull. So that's something I learned on this lesson. You have to have this dark in order to have the light show up. Have you heard of dry brushing? Well, that's what we're going to be doing, and what I want to do is just start shading or shadowing this uh, painting now. And see, this is all dried. Everything is dry, so this is going to be delightful to work on. I want a very stiff bristle brush. As you can see, number two, that's about the size of my fingernail there. And um, well, let's just start in with uh, a little shading. So this is the old gray that I had. Now what I did, I just put my, my uh, paint in the freezer. And so it's still good to use. I just took it out like 20 minutes ago. So it's still great to use. Well, I'm looking for a shade darker than this. 
And what I want to do is just go ahead and load my brush with this, both sides, kind of work it into the bristles there. And then what I want you to do is just take, oh, you can't see that, okay. I want you to take and just wipe off as much as you can. Because I don't want to leave a lot of paint. This is dry brushing. And so I'm just going to go in and just start pushing a little bit just so some of that color comes off the brush. And can you see how it's uh, shading? And let's do some uh, underneath the belly here too. Because this would be shadowed under here. And probably have some back here too. I'm probably going to make this uh, feathers a little bit longer here in the back because they're a little, to me, they're, they look a little short. And let's see, we might have a little bit right in here underneath the neck. And also across the eye. because the eye is kind of like, oh, maybe just a little bit indented. Okay, a little bit more down here. Add a touch of yellow to that. And a touch of blue. That makes it almost a greenish color. And again, wipe off. Yeah, I like that. kind of blends in with the background a little bit more. Okay, um, next let's go into a very dark, dark brown, or excuse me, black and blue, very dark. We can even touch a touch of red into that. Now this is going to be his tail feathers. Uh, I'm going to start right in, there's actually kind of like, oh, maybe two little tufts here. And just sort of lightly blending that up into this other color. See how that just lightly blends in there? And let's even go into a little more. Yeah, that's looking good. I decided I wanted a little, just a little dab of burnt sienna, just for shading. Grab a little bit of this burnt sienna. And just go underneath here and wipe the brush off when you get that. You want to wipe some of that sienna off. And then just come under here because there would be a little reflection from the wood there. I'm very lightly, lightly touching that. And next, now I can't go into it because this bird is so small, 
I can't go into a tremendous amount of detail. So what I'm going to do is take a fine liner brush. Can you see this one? It's just a little, a little pointed one. This is actually a number, uh, number zero. You know, this is called a fire in me. I, I bought a bunch of these brushes because they have really nice points on them. Fire in me, and this is a number zero. Well, let's go ahead and do some eyes. So I'm just loading this with a little of this black blue color. Get a nice little point. Can you see that? Okay. His eye is kind of like, let's just come up and down and make a circle. Actually, their eyes, believe it or not, are red. It's like they've got this whole red thing around their eyes. Is and then, the, and actually, they're kind of a yellowish color too. So I'm going to take a little bit of white and ochre. And dot here, dot here. And wipe that brush off really well and a dot for right in the middle of the eye. Well, if I can get that right here. Yeah, there. That's just kind of what their eyes look like. Now this is too fine, I, unless I wait until this dries and then maybe I could draw a very fine red line around the eye. But I'm not going to worry about that. I'm just going to leave this like this for now. And then for this beak area, I'm going to go into some ochre and just start back here and come down. They actually have this kind of this little pointy thing on the end of their beaks. And I want to touch a little bit of red on there. On the underside. And I want to do the same thing on the foot. With just ochre. We'll come down here. And fill this in. little bit of brown on that. A slight bit of red. some white and ochre so it's a very light color If you guys are enjoying this, 
I invite you to subscribe to my channel. I post a new video usually around once a month, sometimes more, sometimes less, <laughs> just depending on what's going on. A little bit of black here. Got a little toenail. Next, we need to outline this little beak here and give it just sort of a tiny little nose. Let's get real a good point on this brush. You'd have a little nostril here. And then also a little bit of dark on the end of this nose. Oh, he's looking pretty good. <laughs> Again, trying to get a very, very fine point. You have to keep twisting that brush until it comes to just a really super fine point. Let's just go ahead and just a little bit on this eye here. Okay, that's good. And I want to also darken a little bit under these wings. Oops! <laughs> Almost lost the brush. Almost, not quite. And I want to grab some white. And there would be just a little, uh, let's grab, make a little more of a point here. On the end of his feathers, there's somewhat of a little, like so. And also, there's a little bit, it might be just a hair here. And there would be some also back here. like to highlight the little feet a bit. The very, very front of his legs. And it got a bit too globby. I'll have to fix that later. And let's see, now I want to start doing this highlight. You know the lifespan of these birds is about 10 to 15 years. And they're really called gulls. They're not, they're not seagulls. They're only called seagulls because they really accumulate near the sea. And uh, that's where they're most seen. 
I'm just highlighting the top of the head here. There'll be a little bit, wiping the brush, a little bit under the, the uh, mouth here, the beak. little bit on the cheek and just blend that in. Take your time with this. Be very careful. Go slow. You can always repair it and, and fix up later what you mess up. <laughs> I do that. As you know, I do that all the time. A little more white here. Probably this white uh, Probably strike definitely under here. Just blend in. I'm liking the way he's looking. Another interesting fact is that they love to steal food, as you probably already know, and they will try to eat almost anything. I'm not kidding. I mean anything. They are notorious stealers and eaters. <laughs> Let's add just a little bit of brown in here. Yes, that's looking good. I want to rinse that brush again now. Make sure I have all the color out of the brush. Because I'm going to again highlight with white. This time make sure it's a pretty pure white. to go, well, let's get that a little more of a point here. And I want now a chiseled edge with this brush. Just flatten it like so and you get just a perfect point. Just a hair on this top of the beak. And I want to also get a definite light color right on his chest. You know these birds will nest year round and they will nest anywhere. Anywhere they can make room. And they usually lay like, oh, one to four eggs. Not very much. They have a lot of predators, especially dogs and cats. Because their nests aren't necessarily up high. Wow, now that is looking very pretty. I'm going to also highlight a hair on the back here. And right here. I 
I also want to highlight a little bit. Let's, let's make that just sort of a light golden color. A little more white. Just a very light color. Right here, a broken line, not a solid line. Probably right here. Maybe a touch here. right here. I want to get a different brush for this. Rinse that brush out and set it aside. I'm going back to this little number two brush that I used to do the rope. Uh, going to some of this white Maybe a touch of brown, that's a little too, a little too bright. Yeah, this is good. Let me wipe this off here because I don't want that. Let's try this. There, saying that's what I wanted. I wanted that to show up right there. Might have a little bit of backlight right here. Okay, I'm going to go into pure white. And right here, right about here. Put your brush in and twirl it. Because we have a nice bright full moon. If you want, you can put a few stars in here. You don't have to, but you could. And then with just this brush now, I just wiped it off, got most of the color off, right underneath the moon, we would have a little bit of highlight. might have a little bit on the hillside here. Possibly a touch over here. Not very much. Here with my little pointy brush, um, I want to make some small birds right back here in this back area. Uh, these are way off in the distance, so they would not be very large at all. It's kind of like a little M shape or a little W shape, depending on which way you want to go. Uh, mine is more kind of like an M shaped. And um, I want to reload my brush here and get some more oil, some more paint. And uh, let's have one larger one. Uh, let's go on the other side here just a little bit bigger 
and a little swoop and down and a swoop again. Oh good, I like the way this one turned out. Oh cool! <laughs> Okay, another thing you could do is you could make this a horizontal or a vertical picture, a vertical painting rather than a horizontal painting. I think that would be very nice. That would be lovely. Just cut off these mountains here and there you go. So take these tips and try it out and see if you don't love it. <laughs> okay, thanks for joining me. See you next time. Bye.